Um, what I want to do now in closing, if you can give me just a few more minutes, uh, is just to kind of update and tell you some things that are going on. Um, we have a lot of things that are going on here in June and July this summer, um, which is typically the time that we kind of slow down. It seems like we're speeding up this year, um, which is great. I uh, just want to give you just some awareness of some things that are going on with the Healthcare Coalition. Uh, we have a few work groups that are working uh, right now to improve the things that we're doing. Um, we have our Healthcare System Operational Response Committee that is working on a strategy and a plan for gathering and sharing uh, situational awareness during an event, as you all probably have experienced at some point in time. Um, it helps you in your facility if you have a clear idea what's going on out in the real world. Uh, and although the media is probably the first to tell you, the media may not always be right. So the Healthcare System Operational Response Committee has developed a protocol that we're going to try to implement around our region for gathering and sharing accurate, credible situational awareness. Uh, the committee has been meeting for about nine months now, and uh, we're finalizing that process, and we'll be putting together a tabletop for the organizations uh, that are part of that committee to actually walk through that process, see how it works, learn from that, how can we make it better. Uh, and once we get through that tabletop exercise, we will probably will start to roll that out to the region uh, so that we can actually start to implement it. Um, so that's, that's one effort that we have. We also have a committee that is working on patient tracking. And I'm going to kind of very high level go over these because we're going to have a full report out by the committee either at our next meeting or the meeting after, whichever is appropriate for their timeline. Patient tracking is looking at our region developing a way to track patients from the scene through the healthcare system in a unified, formalized manner so that if something were to happen, we know where the patients are, we know where they went, and, and we can answer those questions that seem to be a real problem a lot of times uh, during an event when people can't tell family members where their son, daughter, mother ended up. But don't worry, we'll find out and we'll let you know sometime. So we're trying to work out a system for our region to implement that will really give us a better grasp on tracking patients. And uh, we'll have that report out um, as that, I think they're getting prepared at this point to also uh, try a tabletop exercise with the committee to see how their process works. So that's another effort that's taking place. Uh, the other committee that we have working is our Disaster Medical Coordination Center uh, committee, work group, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as you know, we have a, a regional uh, DMCC model where Deaconess serves as our regional uh, Disaster Medical Coordination Center lead. Um, so they are heavily developing uh, their capabilities and capacities and plans to serve in that role. Uh, we also have two sub-regional facilities. Um, Holy Family serves as the uh, Disaster Medical Coordination Center for the northern part of our region. Women Hospital serves to coordinate efforts from a healthcare perspective. Pullman Hospital in Whitman County, sorry, uh, serves the southern part of our, God, I must have heard your head rattle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Must up. Pullman is serves as a DMCC role for the southern part of our region or of our region. So we've got three hospitals serving in that role that are coordinating the efforts to make sure that patients get placed in the right place uh, in the most efficient manner where they can receive the appropriate treatment at the, the right level that they need. So that work is ongoing. There's also a, a uh, regional meeting or a statewide meeting that's taking place in July to bring all of the state DMCCs together to start talking about how are they functioning? How are they organized? What are the forms that they use? And how can we standardize this on a statewide level so that all the regions are functioning, utilizing the same um, tools and technologies? So a lot of great work going on there to get us down the road a little farther. And like I said, as we get down that road, we will bring those folks to you to, to better educate and inform you on the things that they put in place. Uh, the next thing I want to give you uh, is for hospitals, um, a couple assignments and uh, deliverables. Uh, typically every year, or well every year, uh, we hospitals and community health centers are asked, heavily encouraged to uh, complete their NIMS survey. It's an annual process that we go through uh, every year forever. Um, and it's a, a web-based process. Those surveys are due uh, June 30th. 
So if you have any questions, uh, hospital partners, please reach out to me. We want to help you out as much as we can to make sure that we can get those uh, NIMS assessments uh, completed. Uh, they are of value to the state. They are of value to you uh, in showing, uh, and, and I think it, it really helps your emergency planning efforts to know where your NIMS compliance levels are. Uh, it also helps, I believe, with your CMS and JCO emergency preparedness requirements if you're trying to achieve those statuses. So uh, something to keep in mind and a, and a deliverable that we're really trying to push for. The other thing that we've got out, and it was a very short timeline to hospitals, is the uh, category of care survey, which is a quick survey that really helps to feed the DMCC role uh, in intra-agency, intra intrastate, uh, patient tracking um, DMCC coordination. That survey was sent out last week. It's got a very short turnaround. Again, it's just hospitals, so the rest of you don't have to worry about that. But uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to complete your survey yet, uh, it is due Friday. Uh, if you need it again, let me know. I can resend it. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know, and I will try to address those. Um, and now, some of the events that we've got coming up uh, here in the month of June. Um, most of you, our hospital partners, uh, are very familiar. Some of you other might be. The Washington State Hospital Association offers every year an annual uh, emergency preparedness conference. Their conference is free. Uh, registration, it's held in Wenatchee. It's June 1st and June 2nd. That conference always receives um, high accolades. So if you have the opportunity to attend that conference, uh, it is a great one to go to. Um, we just found out that on June 9th, um, uh, the, the Spokane International Airport and partners will be conducting a tabletop um, exercise uh, that will include uh, our Disaster Medical Coordination Center. Deaconess will be involved in that tabletop. They are looking at how do they manage patient flow during a, during a uh, potential plane crash. So I don't know the scenario. They're still working out the details, but our DMCC will be a big part of that exercise um, to learn from. Also, on June 8th, 9th, and 10th, um, you've probably all heard at some point about Cascadia Rising. It is a large federal, state-led uh, exercise. Um, I'd like to give you a lot of great in-depth details on that exercise, but I don't have any. I do know it's going to take place. I don't really know the scenario. I don't know how it will roll out, but what I'm told is it will roll out the way it rolls out. Um, in essence, what that Uh, if, as, it, as it rolls out, uh, you may get a call for resources, for information. Hospitals may get a request to update WATRAC. Uh, our DMCC might get activated. Uh, we don't know. So during that exercise, we will just have to roll with it, play with it, and take part in the pieces uh, if we are asked to participate. So I, I don't know that it will impact all of us. Uh, I don't know that it will impact any of us, but that is the days that it will be taking place. Uh, it is a, a is it a full scale on the west side? Yes. So it's a full scale on the west side, and so we will see how it rolls out to the east side. Um, but those are the dates. As part of that, here is an opportunity for you if you want to. I know some of you in your childhood days really wanted to be an actor or an actress. Um, here is your opportunity. Uh, Panhandle is uh, conducting two exercises during that time as part of the Cascadia rollout. On June 9th, they will be conducting a medical needs shelter um, from 10.30 to 4. And on June 10th, they will actually be conducting a mass casualty incident. And I think that it's uh, at their, host their uh, airport. Um, so they will actually be doing these exercises. Uh, and I've got Janine's contact information up here. Uh, Janine Wilson from Panhandle Health District uh, is the one you want to contact. They are looking for volunteers. They are looking for people that want to serve as casualties. Um, oh, and bilingual as well? Okay, so they're all uh, also looking for bilingual individuals. So if you, if you want an opportunity to play in an exercise, to see how it happens, or if you just want to get all that stuff gooey all over your body to look like a patient, um, that's a great opportunity. And Janine is the one you want to talk to, and there is her number on the screen. Um, June 23rd, uh, we'll be taking, uh, we'll be conducting an interstate hospital coordination 
system coordination plan training, and this training is in uh, respect to a huge effort the Department of Health is leading with uh, Russell Phillips as a facilitator. Uh, they are in the process and they have done a lot of hospital assessments. They've gone out to 11 statewide. Yeah, so they have gone out and they have assessed a lot of hospitals to look at what their surge, medical surge capabilities are. Uh, they are also looking to gather information from the category of care surveys that we're doing. Um, and it looks like they will also be surveying a whole bunch of other facilities in our hospital, really looking at what are the medical surge capabilities that we have, what types of services do we have in these hospitals, so that we can better understand during an event where we can send patients um, and where we should not send patients based on their needs. So it is a huge effort, and it's a great opportunity for our hospital partners primarily, but uh, anybody that would like to participate in that training, uh, it's June 23rd. It is here at Enduras, and we will be sending out, I think we already have, but we'll be sending out a reminder again uh, on that opportunity if you want to participate. And finally, as part of Cascadia as well, Spokane Regional Health District uh, is working with the American Red Cross for an alternate care facility exercise. And Cindy, would you like to stand up? And, unless you're feeling facetious that day. So I apologize. That is my error. I, I went to the generic format, and now I remember she's exactly right. So if you are interested and want to participate or observe in that, in that exercise, feel free to catch Cindy before she leaves today. I think you're still looking for helpers and volunteers. Yes? So, <laughs> perfect. So if you have some opportunity and you want to have an opportunity to play in an exercise, that's another great opportunity to do that. So I think that runs through the events that we have coming up. Uh, the information, if you need contact information, the CA Thompson or the Janine, uh, her email is up there, as well as the WISHA website if you're still interested in the WISHA Disaster Conference. Um, with that, if there's no questions or comments, I think we've completed our agenda. We've completed on time. Um, and uh, hopefully, when you leave here, drive safe. I guess my closing comment is, uh, this is Memorial Day weekend. It is a three-day weekend. Please be safe. But more importantly, uh, let's remember the reason for the weekend and Memorial Day um, and say thanks to those that have served, thanks to those that are serving, and thanks to those who may be in the room yet that will be serving. So it's a great opportunity to, to uh, recognize those that have served our country. Thank you very much.